Greetings, Physics 155 online students. This is a brief video introduction to what this course is about. I will be producing these videos of, say, five to ten minutes long periodically throughout the course to try and give a little explanation for some of the more troublesome concepts that we might be getting into. But to start with, let me just say that this course, uh, Physics of this thing that we've called the Internet, I regard it much more as a course in the relation between science and society, the develop of, development of um, scientific literacy, the use of the Internet as a communications tool, than I do a pure physics course, although you'll learn a lot more physics than you realize. And in fact, the Internet is basically the result of five or six Nobel-winning experiments or discoveries that happened between about 1900 and 1950. So we're going to start off on this course. The course is arranged, as you see from the modules page on the course web page, into eight distinct concept and content modules, along with a calendar when those should be read by. But we'll start off by doing a little bit of the history, the proper history of the development of the Internet, because you live in the times of revisionist history for sure. And there's a lot of urban legends about the development of the Internet. And in fact, your very first assignment will um, try to get you to identify really who the key players were. Al Gore wasn't one of them in this development. Uh, but before we even get to Internet history, we'll start off with a brief... I should talk now. A brief... Uh, interview about what communications is and why language is hard and why communicating efficiently is really, really hard. And so to some extent, the Internet is also a new kind of language that involves its own protocols that are necessary to make it work. So after we do that, then we'll finally get into the start of the, the physics of this, the um, photoelectric effect really was a big-time discovery in the early 1900s, 1904, essentially. And this is a fundamental piece of physics that allows us to build semiconductors. Now, it's going to take a long time and much research and development to go from this discovery to semiconductors. But the photoelectric effect provides us with proof that nature lets electrons flow through metals by interacting with light. And that's sort of the key to semiconductor design, the key to photovoltaics, and the like. So to understand that, we certainly have to understand what electricity is, how electricity can then be turned into bits, ones and zeros, that provides the communication. The Internet then is a transport medium for that. And at the end of all of this, then we get to what's the bulk of the physics in this class, which is semiconductors. What are they? How do they work? How do you make them process information faster and faster and faster? And that framework sort of sets up where we are um, today, 2012. And then from that, we'll launch on to some more esoteric things like how do we make computers run faster? What is quantum computing? That will be the most confusing part of the class, I guarantee you. Uh, it's probably not real, so it probably won't hurt you, but it's worth thinking about. It has a lot of physics in this. And, of course, coincidentally, the found, or perhaps not, the foundation of quantum mechanics is very much tied up into the discovery of the photoelectric effect. All this happened between about 1900 and about 1920. And then the final part of this course is sort of the sociological component, which I think is important. I mean, you guys grew up using the Internet. It's not going to go away. It has a societal impact. And so this is the scientific mechanism that produced it. So the last part of the course is, okay, well, let's think about what the impact in the long run is on society, because this is an experiment in process. So... The last sort of week and a half of the course, the very last assignment, we'll be dealing with getting you to think about well, what's the end game of the Internet and all this digital communication. Uh, is the human component completely just now reduced to itself, a bunch of ones and zeros? 
Did our soul go away because we built this gigantic machine? It's just something to think about. So that's basically the kind of stuff that you'll encounter during this course. I think it's a useful course in terms of increasing citizen knowledge of a basic fundamental part of our infrastructure. And um, it'll also you'll encounter the interplay between science, technology, and society a little bit. Okay, that's all for now.